Hey everyone, Shaquan here. Welcome to the comprehensive guide for the Mundanugu Witch Doctor for Season 21. We're going to be going over everything you need to know about the Mundanugu Witch Doctor to get up and running to include gear, talents, and how you can push greater rifts. Let's get started. First, let's talk about the change between Season 20 and Season 21. The Mundanugu Witch Doctor set uh, got a slight nerf to where spear barrage damage is no longer affected by pet damage modifiers. So that means Enforcer Gem and Mask of Jerem are no longer going to give you damage. Let's talk about gear. Let's talk about the pieces that you need and how all these pieces work together. So first and foremost, you need the Mundanugu 6-piece set. Now we're actually going to be getting 5 pieces of the set and we're going to be using Ring of Royal Grandeur to complete the set. As well as two pieces of Captain Crimson's and then Ring of Royal Grandeur will be completing the third piece of that set. So very efficient use of Ring of Royal Grandeur to complete two sets. Similarly, we need two ceremonial knives, one equipped, one in the cube. Um, Sacred Harvester, pretty much every Witch Doctor set is going to use this. And the Barber, which essentially just increases all damage by 500%. Your damage accumulates on the target, and then when that accumulated damage equals the full health of the mob, or when you stop casting for a certain amount of time, that it will basically pop and all that accumulated damage will deal direct damage and do AoE. For rings, you want three rings. Compass Rose to go with your Traveler's Pledge to complete that set, which is incredibly powerful with this build. Ring of Emptiness and Ring of Royal Grandeur. I would recommend, if you can, put the Ring of Emptiness in the cube, as that will guarantee the max roll of 300% extra damage, and equip a Ring of Royal Grandeur. In my particular case, I don't have a Ring of Royal Grandeur, so that I have that in the cube, but that's what I'd recommend for you. For your offhand, you want Gazing Demise, which is going to dramatically increase your Spirit Barrage damage, as well as unlock the Phantasm Rune, which is going to add a tremendous amount of damage to your Spirit Barrage. For the cube, you want to have either the Barber or Sacred Harvester, whichever one is not equipped. You're going to want to have Ring of Royal Grandeur or Ring of Emptiness, whichever one you don't have equipped. And then for your armor slot right here, you can either put a Killicurus or Frostburn if you want to be a little bit more aggressive. Personally, I run a Killicurus because I play Hardcore and I don't want to die. And last but not least, in your Bracer slot, you're going to be using Lakumba's Ornament, which gives you 6% damage reduction for every Soul Harvest stack that you have. So that in conjunction with Sacred Harvester gives you a full 60%. So it goes from 30 to 60% damage reduction. Um, additive damage reduction, so that is incredibly powerful. Next up is skills. So the main damage that you're going to be doing is from Spirit Barrage. We're going to be taking the Manitou rune here, because remember we already have the Phantasm from our offhand. You're also going to be using Locust Swarm with Pestilence. Now keep in mind that Locust Swarm is not there for damage. Locust Swarm is essentially only there to spread and give you that 300% damage buff from your Ring of Emptiness. Spirit Walk is a must-have for two reasons. One, it gives you the 60% damage reduction from the Mundanugu 4-piece, as well as it's just a very good ability to get through walls, a very good safety pick. Now. Some people take Jaunt, some people take Severance. I personally like Severance because it doubles the speed for 2 seconds, as opposed to Jaunt that increases the duration by 50%, which means you travel a farther distance with Severance. So that's the reason why I take it. Soul Harvest with Language is going to give you a lot of intellect and a lot of defense through armor and just straight damage reduction. I like to take Horrify Frightening Aspect, mainly because I play Hardcore for the extra armor. But another good thing to take in the spot instead of Horrify would be uh, Pyranado. Another great talent both for the 15% extra damage as well as the ability to group the mob and crowd control them and the mobs will not attack when they're stuck in the piranhas. And that leaves Big Bad Voodoo which from the two piece follows you around which is a ton of fun and I'm really glad they added this mechanic to the game. But we take Ghost Trance because it's just a massive amount of survivability which again in hardcore um, something that I take. There are other runes that you can take there, but um, I think that's the best and most people on the leaderboards seem to be taking that one as well. Let's talk about passives. So the first one is going to be Spirit Vessel. Spirit Vessel is always a good one to take for Witch Doctor. If you're playing Softcore, maybe you don't want to take that, but I would recommend taking it in all cases. Grave Injustice is another must-have. Grave Injustice is, in my opinion, one of the best passives in the game, period. It's going to reduce cooldown on your big bad voodoo, as well as just give you a lot of life and a lot of mana back as you're killing enemies. The third one is Rush of Essence, which is critical for this build because you're casting Spirit Barrage a lot, and it costs a lot of mana. So whether you have a Killicurus or Frostburns, you're going to need this to, to keep that damage pumping. 
And finally, for the last passive slot, I think there's actually several different things you can put in here. I take Blood Ritual because the Blood Ritual 20% effect actually works with the Captain Crimson's um, resource cost being converted into damage reduction. So I think it's a great pickup, and especially for hardcore, but other things you can put in here, Confidence Ritual is another really good one, um, or Swampland Attunement. Although I personally found that my toughness um, in a in like an AOE environment is really not that bad. For me, my only toughness problems come with the Rift Guardian. If I don't have enough cooldown reduction to keep my big bad voodoo up, or just one-shot mechanics. You want to get as close to 45% Spirit Barrage damage as you can, utilizing your offhand, boots, and helm, and get as close to 40% cold damage as you can through your bracers and necklace. Also, if you choose to use Frost Burns in the cube, you can get that up to 60%. For gems, you want to be using Bane of the Trapped, Bane of the Stricken, and Gogok of Swiftness. And also, you want to be using Armor Gems, so either red or green gems in your chest and legs, and as much cooldown reduction as you can get in your helm. Talking about cooldown reduction, it is very important for this build. With your Grave Injustice on most trash packs, you won't need a whole lot of cooldown reduction because your big bad voodoo will come up. But keep in mind that when you're fighting a Rift Guardian, which is probably the most dangerous thing to do with this build, unless you have 67% cooldown reduction total, so that combines Gogok of Swiftness, uh, you would need about 61% if you factor in your, your Gogok. Keep in mind that you may have some downtime with big bad voodoo on the Rift Guardian, and during that downtime, it can be incredibly dangerous. Um, if it's a Rift Guardian that has adds, then your Grave Injustice will play into that, but something to keep in mind when pushing. Now let's dive into some footage and take a look at the rotation and how to push Greater Rifts. So the first thing you want to do as soon as you get into the Greater Rift is get your Spirit Walk on cooldown for the 60% damage reduction from the Mundanugu 4 piece, as well as um, get 10 stacks of Soul Harvest. This is going to be a massive percentage of your survivability. And uh, again, first priority. Once once you do that, you're going to want to round up as much density as you can. Ideally, you want to be pulling elites and champion packs into density because of the AoE effect of the way Spirit Barrage works. As you can see right here, I get lucky with a Conduit Pylon, so I'm running forward to find as many mobs as I can. Um, in this case, I find one champion pack. I was looking for more, but um, unfortunately there was actually an elite right up, right up there a little bit farther, but I missed it. So then I come back here, grab the con uh, Conduit Pylon, and get as much value here as I can. Probably a bit of a mistake to stop right here in that pack, but I quickly move up into the Champion pack. And this is what you want to be thinking. Pushing higher greater rifts with the Mononuka set, you really need to be leveraging the AoE ability of the set and get as much value as you can out of these, um, out of these Pylons. So again, Conduit, you generally want to... Uh, grab as many packs as you can, as much density as you can to get full value. Generally you want to save a shield or power pylon for the Rift Guardian, so another thing that I'll do is if I see a power or a shield as soon as I go into a Rift, I will actually skip the first Elite pack that I see. I will continue into the um, into the Greater Rift, and then when I get to about 90 or 95 percent or whatever I think um, you know I'll be able to complete with, I will port out and then go right back into the Rift and use that pylon. Uh, for Power Pylon, generally what you want to do with the Rift Guardian is um, build up some of your Stricken stacks. So you want to fight fight him for a little while, build up the stacks before uh, popping the power. You'll get a lot more value that way. And what I try to do is Shield Pylon, if that's the one that I'm, I'm using for the Rift Guardian, is I will fight the Rift Guardian as long as I can without popping the shield. And then if I proc, I'll immediately hit the Shield Pylon. It, has a minute, uh, it lasts for a minute, so um, that adds value. There. So that's kind of generally what you want to be thinking of. Uh, channeling Pylon doesn't add a ton of value for the Mononugu set. Um, it's, it, it adds some with, with not having to rely on your Grave Injustice. Um, and then Speed Pylon obviously will give you uh, run speed and actually in this 120 I got a Speed Pylon uh, in, a, in a level that was really really bad. So I basically used that Speed Pylon to get through the level as fast as possible and get to another open map. Um, so again, yeah, those are the basics for pushing the Greater Rift. Well, that just about does it for the guide. I hope this is helpful. Um, if I missed anything, please drop in the comments below. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video, and also uh, catch me at twitch.tv shackman2006. Have a good one.